In this session we're looking at the filter while busy with stock inquiries. You'll see I've got a few filters here already. In other words, if I double click on a filter, it only displays the information for that specific filter. In other words, here I said, please show me all the stock items that start with the code TSHG and then anything thereafter. Another filter that I created that is a very popular filter, so I'll say clear filter and I'll double click on the next one. This filter doesn't display items with a zero on hand. If I click on the filter you'll see we, we're working with an on hand field and we say only show us stock that has an on hand quantity greater than zero. So what's important when working with filters? It's important to know the field name. And then you have to know what would you like to do within that field name. You, so you select the field you would like to use. Then you specify what you would like to do. Must it be equal to, not equal to, between, greater than? If you use the like option, make sure that you always combine that with a percentage sign. I cannot use the like scenario with an on-hand quantity, so it's not available here. So I say it's greater than, and then I specified an amount. If I now go and change it, and I say greater than 50, and I click on apply, it narrows my stock that it displays here down even further. You can always go back to your filter while you're busy with it. You can have, now I can say, but also only display perhaps with a supplier code that's a specific supply code or a specific description. So you can add queries to a filter. If you save that filter, it will be displayed at the top corner here and it doesn't save the answer, it saves the question. Which means tomorrow or the next day or later on the information changes, the answer in your filter will change as well. And that concludes looking at how to use the filter option under stock inquiries.